wait, wait, hang on, hang on. We can talk about this, right? Actually, I think revenge is bad. You are spared, my brethren. Hey, revenge is bad. Revenge is bad. I just learned that revenge is bad. Hey everyone, it's shilling time again. So first of all, I got my old Twitter back, so that's gonna be my main from now on. Do you remember me now? Can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. My main Twitter account is Top Brick Boss, and my alt account is Lone Grips. So follow whichever one you want, I guess. I also have Instagram, uh, that one too. And I have El Patreon, you can give me money. If I get a thousand dollars, I'll post feed pics or something. Oh, by the way, before I forget, I have a new podcast now. The podcast is called Film Sheet, and you can subscribe and watch our new episodes right now. If you want to see me talk movies with Ellis Mark and Jaden from The Sonic Show, hit the link down below below and subscribe. Not convinced yet? Here's one of our funniest moments. <laughs> wow, wasn't that moment hilarious? These moments and more on our podcast film sheet. Anyways, that's all. Here's the actual YouTube video. Whoever invited us? They're after the enchanted flint and steel. Minecraft! Do I even need to say anything else? Minecraft is one of the most popular games ever made. And for a damn good reason, it's really fun. That's right, y'all. I ain't lying or anything. I'm not gonna be some delusional hipster who says the game isn't great or anything. Because that's simply not true. The game really is great and very groundbreaking. Yeah, the fan base can be a little, uh... The girls are minor. But that doesn't stop the game from being a lot of fun. That's that real music, man. Of course, though, with how big of a franchise Minecraft is, it's only natural the franchise would expand, allowing for many adaptations and spin-offs. Minecraft. Sinky Steve. God damn it, I don't care who Disney fans! I'm not being in another fucking Star Wars movie! I'm looking for Stinky Steve. You come into my property I'm trying to- I'm not going trick or treating you even what the fuck- Easily, however, the strangest and most interesting spin-off is Minecraft Story Mode. Released from 2015 to 2016 episodically by Telltale Games. Now, Telltale has their own history. A history that includes being shut down, and then out of nowhere, revived, I guess. However, at one point, they were kind of the top of the narrative gaming industry. And by at one point, I mean about three years. Weirdly enough though, I will admit, when Telltale's good, they're really good. I mean, yeah, sure, they did kinda make Life is Strange happen and Goodbye Volcano High happen. And yeah, quite a few of their works have the same gameplay narrative problems. But unlike Life is Strange or Goodbye Volcano High, which the whole point is to be derivative, Telltale's whole point both during and post Walking Dead was to modernize the adventure game. You see, Telltale was made up of ex LucasArts employees. And back during the 90s, LucasArts was all about adventure games. Classic games like Sam and Max, Grim Fandango, Monkey Island. However, LucasArts ended up leaving the adventure game genre for fucking Star Wars! Oh yeah, I fucking love Star Wars! Which in turn led to ex-LucasArts devs forming studios like Double Fine and Telltale. This would then cause Telltale to make episodic adventure point-and-click games. With some of them based on games like Sam and Max and Monkey Island. On top of this, they also leaned heavy into licensed games. Releasing games like Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures, Strong Bad's a cool game for attractive people, Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's a great view, but where are the dinosaurs? Hi, I'm Ethan Drake. Welcome to Jurassic Park. However, as this style became more and more niche, as more games became more cinematic, Telltale responded by making games like The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. Games that were more cinematic. And games that leaned a lot more heavy on their great writing and characters. The kind of thing that Goodbye Volcano High would try and do, just forgetting the good characters and good writing parts. However, this would also damn Telltale, as the studio focused more on quantity over quality, trying to replicate The Walking Dead success. The weirdest game during this downfall period, though, was Minecraft Story Mode. Now, reminder, this is post-Walking Dead Telltale, and people knew them for gritty, M-rated video game dramas. Even their Batman game was M-rated. So imagine, out of the blue, they announce 
Minecraft story mode. Like, imagine if Naughty Dog, modern Naughty Dog, right now announced their brand new game and it was a goddamn single-player Fortnite spinoff. However, the real question, though, is was this game any good? This game's reception is overall mixed for a lot of people. Or, in more simpler terms, it's kind of a fucking meme. So I died headfirst into it, and uh, it was certainly uh, an experience, which leads to the game being one of the weirdest games I've ever played. And I'm gonna analyze why that is, because I've lost complete control control of my life. Now here's the first question I know the world is asking. Is Minecraft story mode good? No, not really. The overall game is a complete mess. And it feels like what would happen if someone who wrote gritty crime dramas was forced to write a children's story. But because they don't actually know how to, their solution was to, like, take five steps back in their writing skills. All while shoving in mature themes, but dumbing them down for the kid audience, kinda. It's an indescribable experience. And not really in a good way at all. This is the first segment about the characters of Minecraft story mode. The first problem is the characters. The thing that makes your narrative game go round. And what a mixed bag this cast is, man. So in this game, you play as Jesse, who can be a boy or a girl. The boy, by the way, is played by comedian Patton Oswald for some reason, who aspires to be the best Minecrafter ever at Endercon. That way, the kid playing this game can insert themselves into the story. He's joined by Olivia, one of the characters, and Axel, the dickhead, unlikable comedic relief of the group. Jesse himself is fine, I guess, at certain points. I kind of like this childlike naive at the beginning of the story. And it's a damn shame he's bland for the whole rest of it. And over the story, never actually truly develops. Like, I know it's a choice-driven game, but you still gotta have, you know, a character to play as. He's essentially a really, really passive Gary Stu. One that has, weirdly enough, too much personality to be like a Commander Shepard type vehicle for the narrative, but yet is also so unreactive to the world and so lacking in actual visible development that it's hard to actually engage in roleplay as the character. It's something that, weirdly enough, Telltale had no problem with balancing. The game wants to have the player self-insert, but also wants to have one with a personality. But it's so sloppy that it ends up being an eating your cake and have a two situation. And results in a pretty boring protagonist. The next character is Olivia, who's also very boring. Olivia, like Jesse, could have been a good character if the game didn't spend like a five hours of shafting her to the side. Like Jesse, she also has aspirations, this time to be an engineer. And this is showcased in about uh, two scenes in total. This this character rarely gets any development whatsoever, and the few times it does happen are so spread out and almost random. Just so incredibly sloppy, it's like they didn't really know what to do with the character. And thankfully though, she's not Axel, who actually is incredibly unlikable. He fights with other team members, gets jealous really easily, he's a selfish douchebag, and worst of all, he's not very funny. I have cookies. Sorry Lucas, I only have four. Take it Lucas. That was for you, Jesse, not him. And even worst or worst of all, he once again doesn't actually develop at all over the story. This is just how it's meant to be, and it's meant to be charming and funny, which it really isn't. He's kind of like a male Chloe Price, but with somehow less character development. So already, it's uh, not looking good for this game. But anyways, again, the story begins with all of us wanting to become Minecraft convention winners, right? However, once we enter the contest for not Minecon, and encounter the most generic bullies of all time, we long story short lose our pig, Ruben. His character is at he's a pig. And this is where we meet our next character, Petra. She's voiced by Ashley Johnson for some reason. And she's a no-nonsense redhead tomboy. So basically, she looks, acts, and sounds like Ellie from The Last of Us, which is very cursed. Hey, is all this stuff yours? No. We're just stealing from whoever was dumb enough to leave this here. How the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Wait, hold on. Is that Drake? We then follow Petra for a secret shady deal with a guy named Ivor. He's played by the late Paul Rubens for some reason, and is the most obvious bad guy of all time. We then give him a MacGuffin, but we're tricked out of the secret deal. And while looking for him, we also meet Lucas. He's part of that bully group from earlier, but this guy's actually kinda chill, and joins us for quite literally, uh, no reason. Anyway, so after getting all our friends together, we sneak into the place where the bad guy might be. However, once we sneak in, we find this thing called a command block, and we re-encounter Ivor, and this is where the real plot begins. So in the 
4 of Minecraft Story Mode, there was a group called the Order of the Stone. They took down the Ender Dragon, but eventually split up. Also, furthermore, one of the guys from the Order, Gabriel, is here at the convention, and he apparently knows who Ivor is, and the two of them have some kind of a history. Ivor then uses the command block to summon some kind of giant creature called the Wither Storm. So now the plot is about reuniting the Order together, finding all the missing members and taking down that giant Wither Storm thing, all while juggling all the character drama between all the characters so far. Now, if you didn't notice, I brushed past my own opinions of Lucas and Petra, because I'm going to give them to you now, and they're actually the best characters in the whole story. But Petra was the most interesting character to me. Her tomboy personality really bounces off of Jesse's naivety really well. The thing is, however, she doesn't like depending on other people at all, and downplays a lot of her problems for her own independence, and or to get people to not worry about her. Which becomes a major problem when she gets a thing called wither sickness, a cancerous-like sickness that starts corroding and killing her body. Hey kids, welcome to Minecraft story mode. Are you ready to think about that? Maybe you should rest in this cave for a while. If I say I'm fine, then I'm... <coughs> <coughs> But again, while this is on the surface very interesting, nothing feels properly dived into again. She never learns to actually depend on anyone else, nor does she properly express her fears of dying, I guess. And again, as good as her chemistry with Jesse can be, a lot of it is few and far between. The same can be said about Lucas, a character who I also didn't hate but found overall boring in the end. Hey, I said these were better characters, not good ones. However, his arc from being a rival of Jesse to a friend is pretty interesting. And if he didn't start off as a chill nice guy and was instead a bit more more distant from Jesse, I feel like he and Jesse's arc would have been a lot more stronger. And the moments where he gets pissy in the group and conflict happens, the scenes that are, I will admit, a little bit contrived, are shockingly a bit more interesting since they are conflict of interest for survival. Like, for example, when he's frustrated that Petra is sick, but nobody's really telling him. He's frustrated that you, the main character, are being vague about a character's survival. Petra can take care of herself. You just worry about you. You're hiding something. And by not telling me the truth, you are putting all of us in danger. And you see, that's really interesting. Hopefully you're seeing now why Minecraft Story Mode is extremely weird. This game has a lot of characters, even more than I mentioned. I haven't even talked about the actual Order of the Stone themselves. And the thing is, these characters do have personalities, flaws, potential arcs. And because the game kinda has to since it's a telltale game, there are real personal moments you can kinda have with the characters. The problem is, none of them are actually realized that well, which results in the story being extremely unfocused. Jumping from character to character to plot point to plot point, but will as a result ignore entire character arcs for a long period of time. There's no real satisfying a pathos to anything. And again, it's a damn shame because there are characters and ideas in here that could have been actually pretty good. That's what Minecraft story mode feels like, the bare bones version of a much better story that could have happened. Speaking of which, this is the second section about the themes of Minecraft story mode. That's when shit gets even weirder because when you actually dive into the story, there are some good themes here. So again, the whole plot is basically reuniting the Order of the Stone. Oh well, a giant wither monster attacks the whole Minecraft universe. However, once you start actually uniting people, they end up being massive dickheads. Not only are they flawed and selfish in their own way, but they also bicker and fight over personal issues. The Order of the Stone clearly has personal baggage and doesn't want to be together anymore. It's also revealed that Ivor, the bad guy, was part of the Order the whole time. And the reason he left is because the Order lied about how they defeated the Ender Dragon. You see, instead of using their own weapons or anything, they used the command block MacGuffin to kill it. I'm not sure how that would make them any less heroic, but uh, the point is they lied about how they defeated the Ender Dragon for years, so everything is a he lie. It was a well-scripted drama staged by the Patriots for the benefit of the public. What's really interesting, though, is that when characters in Jesse's friend group start fighting or get pissy at each other, you start seeing parallels between our main characters and the Order of the Stone that fell apart years ago. The game explores, or should have tried to explore, not only the idea that your personal heroes can't really be trusted, and just as human as you are deep down inside, but also the idea idea that your own friend group isn't immune to their own problems, and might possibly be doomed to the same fate, potentially? The two examples being the characters of Eligard and Magnus, two Order members who fight with each other a lot. And spoiler alert, Eligard eventually dies. Oh. But after she dies, Magnus starts mourning her, and you can tell he's regretting the way he's treated her throughout the game. Furthermore, both Olivia and Axel are influenced by both these characters respectively. Which is, hmm, very interesting thematically. The problem, though, is that the game never actually gives you, like, a conclusion to this. It's, again, not actually explored 
at all. And the game quickly reverts to the generic, you save the world and you're the new heroes type of ending. I really would have loved for there to be scenes where characters start fearing they'll become the Order, and they'll eventually lose their friendships with each other. But I guess that idea wasn't noticed by anyone or something, or the game was just very rushed, because the game never actually tackles these themes. It ends up lightly touching these themes and then just rushing to the ending. What could have been a really smart idea is very quickly tossed aside. But somehow, Minecraft Story Mode found a way to be thematically disappointing. Kinda crazy, bro. The Order are still people, just like us. Right. Just like us. I mean, how are we the ones saving the world when even they don't have what it takes? I like that way of looking at it. There's something else that's also really shocking yet mildly interesting yet not expanded upon well enough in this game is just how dark and depressing it is. I'm not kidding here. Telltale pulled a page out of their goddamn Walking Dead book for this game. Again, you have the death of a pretty major character, Eligard. Please don't die, Eligard. Please just... Hang on a little longer. I don't feel so good. A death that characters start talking about and are, like, mortified by? You guys talking about Eligard? I just can't believe she's gone. Doesn't feel real. Again, you have the character of Petra suffering from wither sickness. And when she gets it, the characters get, like, really oh, serious. Gross. And I mean, yeah, okay, it makes sense. The game in these moments gets more serious, the stakes are raised. But no, I mean, like, the game gets uncomfortably serious. Like, your family member has zombie cancer type serious. Part of me is hoping that when we bomb the wither storm, this sickness will just dissipate. What the f- Fuck. Like, fucking look at her by the end of the goddamn game and she's dying! And this is in, like, a silly fucking Minecraft game where characters say noob. We were such a scared bunch of noobs back then. The game swaps between lighthearted fantasy tone and depressing dread tone like a goddamn Metal Gear game. And here's the thing, I have no problem with this game being dark or even as dark as it actually is. I just did a video not too long ago about the Klonoa game. Games. And long story short, those games are also incredibly dark, but they have a reason to be. They have themes to explore and shit. In Minecraft Story Mode, on the other hand, it feels a little bit more like a shock value. I'm not against these darker things being in the game. And the emotional beats on their own are relatively effective. It's just that the game can't figure out what tone it actually wants to go for. And these darker moments aren't explored enough to actually be intelligent. This all goes back to Minecraft Story Mode just being a really weird experience. One that's both really good and really bad at the same time. There is something there, and I wish this game being a Minecraft game didn't limit it. It could have been a game deconstructing the idea of becoming your heroes, and figuring out how you and your friends can improve yourselves from the ashes of your heroes. I'm just saying, maybe we should teach Minecraft kids not to trust their heroes, if you know what I mean. But the game never elaborating on any of this really hurts it, and its reliance on trying to be dark instead of just naturally being that also hurts it. There is a good story for both kids and and adults to enjoy here. It's just a shame the writers uh, didn't go, actually go, go, write it. Oh yeah, and uh, Ruben's death, uh, inexcusable. What, what the fuck were you thinking here? Minecraft Story Mode. Minecraft Story Mode. Minecraft Story Mode is one of the weirdest things I've ever done in my life. And trust me, I snorted your mom as a Percocet before. Free Percocet? Hell yeah, hand it over. For every good idea this game has, there's some the baffling decision somewhere else. The game has good themes, and the dark moments may be out of place in a Minecraft game, but I kind of appreciated them. Sadly, it's offset by the game being too scared to elaborate on any of it. Always trying to default back into generic kids' fantasy. I'm not saying that a game with a lot of dark shit in it can't have a happy ending, but that shit's gotta be earned. Klonoa 2 has a happy ending, and that story totally deserves it. And in Minecraft Story Mode's case, a lot of this shit feels more rushed than actually satisfying. This game overall is a cash grab, but there is a good story hidden underneath this cash grab. But the whole story is treated more like Minecraft merchandise than anything. By the the way, I was gonna review the DLC for this game, but I quickly realized that it was a major waste of my time and nothing really happens in it. Basically, it's Jesse, Ivor, Petra, and Lucas all getting lost in this portal place. And for a whole four more episodes, you get to dick around going on random adventures. One of them involves the bully from the beginning of Minecraft Story Mode who disappeared for the whole fucking thing, who hates you for taking all the spotlight so he becomes a war criminal in a different dimension or something. And somehow they made that underwhelming and boring. Although you can fucking murder him. I, 
Okay. The one actually interesting episode is the haunted house murder mystery with the YouTubers. And from that sentence I just said, you can tell it was not for the reasons they probably intended. And I'm Captain Sparkles. Bitch, I'm Captain Sparkles. Bitch, I'm Captain Sparkles. But yeah, this one includes a bunch of Minecraft YouTubers. People like Dan TDM and Captain Sparkles and Stampy, whose performances range from actually not too bad to, uh... Listen, I just want to get out of here and get on with my day. Look, I'm trying not to be mean here, but... I'm telling you, you've got the wrong guy. Honest. I would never hurt anyone. You've got to believe me. I'll give you five seconds to get your fucking hands off me. But the whole plot of this thing is basically everyone's in this giant murder house. And they have to find the white pumpkin who is the murderer, who is the imposter among us. This means one of the first characters they kill off is Captain Sparkle. Gotta say, I cried during this scene. Oh my god. R.I.P. my boy. But otherwise, everything else is pretty uninteresting and not worth talking about. Oh, well, at least I own a rare Steam product now, I guess. The game is also pretty shockingly buggy. It's not as bad as Goodbye Volcano High, but it is very distracting. On top of being inexcusable because it hasn't been patched. It's things like voice lines randomly getting cut off for no reason. Oh, and some string from a spider that I fought. String? Huh? Certain objects will just teleport from one place to another for no reason. Huh? There was one episode where the whole blank will remember this prompts weren't showing up correctly. So all you got was shit like a question mark. Huh? In fact, some of these bugs were the same ones encountered by Super Bunny Hop. Seven years ago. And it's crazy that none of this got patched at all. And furthermore, sadly, will never be patched. As the game is currently delisted, and even if it were relisted, I doubt the studio would even care. The new Telltale is not the same company it used to be. It kinda, sorta, it's it's weird. One writer, Shannon Inglis, went on to write- ah! Meanwhile, current Telltale made The Expanse, a game that I heard was coming out, and then nothing else. I didn't even know it came out until I looked it up just now. Meanwhile, The Wolf Among Us 2 is still in development. Here's hoping it's a half as good as Minecraft Story Mode, a game that proves that you can have good ideas no matter the concept. But at the same time, good ideas don't mean jack shit if you don't have good execution. So in the absolute end, this game is a mess, and it's not very good. Even so, however, I still think this game deserves to be realistic. It's a weird piece of art that deserves to be preserved and played by people who want to play it, I guess. It's just crazy how any piece of art can just be gone like that, completely removed from stores and unable to purchase. It's kinda sad, honestly. People worked on this game, and now it's just unable to be played legally anymore. But I guess that's business, even if I really don't want it to be. No matter what, I think we're all in agreement that Minecraft Story Mode is certainly one of the video games ever made. Here's hoping Captain Sparkles got a really good royalty check. Fuck you in the lane you came with. Me and you ain't on the same shit. You ain't in my lane, bitch, nah. Throw that shit in fifth, really on my wrist. Ay, baby, you a son, I'm my only wish. I'm counting blue honeys, I'm too money. Ay, I'm a little bitch, you too lovely. Yeah, hanging up and calling me right back. Ay, baby, why you calling me like that? Yeah, getting high with the seat, lay back. Baby, gon' relax, yeah. Ay, they don't know the half, yeah. No matter what happened, I got your back. Baby, that's the facts, yeah. That's the facts, yeah. Ay, but the feeling's gone I try to find the words But they never come I can still see you on the lawn Lay Laying outside in the summer sun Yeah, we can fight But the feeling's gone I try to find the words But they never come I can still see you on the lawn Lay Laying outside in the summer sun Hey, I'm with a dark-skinned girl on a Sunday That's that Black Sabbath them ones all down on a Honda, yeah, she had a habit. Baby, that's the facts, yeah, that's the facts, yeah. You didn't have to cut me off. Let's get this last piece of wood, then I can finally go to the nether. All I need to do is go into my house, just grab this last, oh wait, this is glass. Oh yeah, yeah, forgot that I didn't finish my window. This is the right chest. Got the last piece of obsidian that we need. And now we can go over here and place the obsidian. And then with the wood that we got, we can place it like this and now light the wood on fire. And now we can go into the nether.
And now we can finally go to bed. Hey, what's good, y'all? I'm gonna need y'all to tap in, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm charging $10 for the ball picks, about $15 for the ball jiggle vids, you know, $20 for the dick picks, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? $30 for the dick vids, you get me, you know what I'm saying? Hey, but peep this, peep this. $40 for the nut vids, but it gets even better. You pay 10 more for the nut vids, but you get to hear me moaning, you know? All this is monthly subscriptions, you know what I'm saying? So tap in.